Now that the arcade cabinet has been built, it's time to work on the electronics. The first step is to take the control board that I made in the last video and install all the buttons. These buttons I got from Element 14. They consist of a plastic housing, a plastic nut, and then the actual physical switch itself. These just drop down into the holes that I drilled and tighten in with a nut. I used three different colors just to make it look a little bit better and to indicate the different uses for the buttons. After all the buttons are installed, I need to find out where I want to put the Raspberry Pi and the prototyping board that I'll be using to make a ground rail. Once I figure out a good position for those, I can start running wires. To do so, I first want to cut the wire to length, strip it, and then crimp on a connector for the Raspberry Pi. This is just a standard female connector that is used for Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, and desktop computers. After it's crimped, I put a plastic housing over it and solder one end of the wire to the button. I repeat this process for all 12 switches and then move on to fixing the other electronics firmly to the board. I then traced out where I wanted things to go, and then drilled pilot holes and screwed everything down. For the Raspberry Pi, I decided to use motherboard standoffs from a computer to lift it away from the board, but it turns out the screws that had to go into the standoffs were wider than the holes in the Raspberry Pi. So to fix this, I had to use a needle file and widen out the holes inside the Raspberry Pi. This is definitely not ideal, and I would definitely recommend using something else to screw down the Raspberry Pi, but uh, it's all I had and ended up working in the end. Next I moved on to the ground wires. For these, I soldered one end to the button and then another end to the prototyping board. After I did this for all 12 switches, I soldered all the ends on the prototype board together with a small piece of wire with the sleeving stripped off. After that was done, I soldered on a another wire to the prototyping board and then added a connector to that to plug into the Raspberry Pi. After all the soldering is done, I plugged in the switches into the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. I used this diagram to show me which switches I wanted to go where. Um, it doesn't really matter which pins you plug in where, as long as you make sure everything's connected to ground and everything's connected to a data pin. Make sure to not use the power pins, because shorting those to ground does not cause good things. Next, it's time to move on to the modding. I just bought the cheapest 24 inch monitor I could find, in this case it just happens to be an LG. You could buy a bigger monitor if you wanted, but I just wanted something cheap and easy to work with. Since it's mounted inside the arcade machine, I don't need any of its outer casing, so the first step is to remove that. 
There wasn't much inside of this thing, only the LCD panel itself and a tiny controller board that wasn't even held in with screws. Once it is out, I can mount it into the bezel that I made in the last episode. To do this, I glued in some blocks to hold in place. I then made two L-shaped pieces of wood to screw into the blocks and hold it in from the back. I covered these with felt as to not scratch the back of the monitor. I then installed it into the cabinet and then put on the controller board with some double sided tape. I also added a power bar at this point to plug everything into and work as a master on off switch for the entire machine. Next, it's time to work on the sound. I bought a small 5 watt speaker to put into the top of the arcade machine, but because the uh, Raspberry Pi's audio jack outputs very little power, I needed an amp to make it loud enough. So I found this old computer subwoofer that has an amp built into it and took it apart. I just cut off the sub and put it aside for another project. I then had to remove the power cable, and the only way to do this without cutting the cable was to cut the case open. A Dremel made quick work of that problem. I then soldered on the wires to the speaker and added a 3mm audio jack to plug it into the amp. Next I drilled in the hole into the top of the cabinet and then cut some old grill from a computer case to cover the speaker. Then I screwed everything into place and plugged it all in. So that is all for electronics. Check out my next video where I'll be installing the software and adding a few finishing touches to the machine, or check out my last video where I made the cabinet itself.